Hey there viewers, in the last video um, Active Directory Domain Services was installed using PowerShell. In this video will be about um, ways to join a uh, workstation to a domain. Um, typical ways using PowerShell and I'll go over a offline domain join using djoin too. So when this starts up, when that VM starts up, uh, first thing is log on as the user as who has rights to add the workstation to the domain and um, I'll be using the default admin of the local workstation and the DC administrator account which is a member of uh, numerous other security groups by default and uh, so first of all let me let me open up uh, a duck here and you'll see I just made a simple OU structure here just simply just so I can have a distinguished name that separates computers from users because computers will be dropped in the default computers container and users in the default users container and uh, you could use a command like reader cmp to redirect computer accounts to an OU path and also reader users USR to redirect it to a typical you know to a user path but I'm not going to do that because you can specify a parameter here and I've got two a ducks open don't need both of those and anyway first thing I want to do is log on to this workstation as the local admin local admin lack of creativity or lack of confusion I say lack of confusion anyway let me open up uh, PowerShell as an admin and local admin here and just let's check out resolution name resolution so we're gonna ping DC01 and I don't want to see all the IPv6 don't need to set a good buffer size so I can see it on the network monitor and then tell it infinitely so You can see it's pinging here and right here it is sending back or correctly stated it's pinging here and now I'll go back over to the workstation here and stop that now that I know that that works let me close that down and also DC01 had a uh, forward resolution back to the IP address so we know that's fine now too let me close that down and I'm going to pause the video and uh, I want to take a snapshot of this right here real quick so let me take the snapshot if you go into computer accounts here there is one already in there but now there's none I just deleted it and next on the list would be you want to do add computer specify computer name you know, um, let's see the computer name is client 20 don't ask why and specify the domain name and that would be example.com you don't need to include the top level domain there but it doesn't hurt either and then specify the OU path uh, which you do as so OU equals computers this is why I kept it simple OU equals CLT comma DC equals alright and then after that you want to have it prompt you for credentials from the uh, domain controller administrator account so that would be example administrator and then force a restart here just include the restart parameter it'll prompt give it the password and it's restarting notice before it even gets back up there's client 20 on the server on the domain controller all right go in here and go to system and notice client20.example.com now um, 
previously th at Ag Computer, remember it had the credential parameter and it prompted for the password. This time we'll feed it the password, but to do so it has to be converted to a secure string. So a variable has to be used. And I'm going to, or I want that snapshot right there, yeah. All right, and start it back up again. All right, and there it is. Let me check system, and it's back on the work group again. So this time, we're going to need to uh, create a variable. I'll just variable one there, and uh, it's going to going to create a new object, and that new object will be in this uh, class path, if you will, system management and automation and PS cred credential there yes then you will be using a uh, parenthetical expression and feeding it that way so example I can't talk and type very well so I'm just gonna be quiet here and you want to convert to I want to convert to a secure string and you'll include the password or I'll include the password right now and make sure that's as plain text force close off the parentheses there um, blah 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 switch parameter required by okay apparently it had a problem with that so Now the variable's set. And since the variable set, you can do simply now this time instead of the prompt, you can do add computer domain name. Domain name is example.com. You don't have to include that TLD, but you can if you want to. Um, so credential in this case will be the variable, which was what? Variable one? right and this time it shouldn't prompt and it doesn't prompt so restart the computer and I'll pause the video while that restarts log in now just have to say could log in as a user could click this right here and go back and log in to the domain because this is the uh, workstation name there, the host name, and doesn't matter though because there are no user counts. Go here to system and we will see that it's part of the domain. Now I'm going to shut this down and rejoin the work group again. Or as a matter of fact there's no point in that, that's why I took the snapshot. I'll go back here and restore this snapshot. It's got to be shut down. Alright, so the virtual machine state has been set again and it's part of the work group and now we'll do an offline domain join. And because offline domain joins are great for rolling out, deploying, uh, you know, physical computers and especially for virtual machines or no network connections, because of that I'm going to disconnect the VM from the network and disconnect this VM from the network. All right, so now there's no connection, and I'm going to delete that computer account, and I'm going to bring up uh, command prompt, move this over a little bit, move a duck over here, right in the corner, and issue the command. Djoin, the first thing you want to say is Listen, I want to provision a computer account. So that's what that does. And then specify a domain, example.com, and specify the machine name. You can just type in machine and then client 20. 
and save file, which would be, I forgot the A, save file, and then you want to give it a path where it will have the blob file, the base64 file, which is a sensitive file, and so you don't want to just be lackadaisical with uh, where you create this file, but for this, I'm just going to put it on the uh, desktop. So, users, administrator, desktop, then we'll call it blob.txt, because that's what it is, and provisioning the computer. All right. Now, if I hit refresh there, nothing. Forgot to do redir CMP. So if I hit refresh down in computers, you can see it put it down here. It provisioned a computer account. Now let me minimize this. And there's the blob file. And if I open it, you see that it's, and actually let me turn on word right too. It's all this. And by the way, these things, uh, they're not encrypted. So I mean, it may look encrypted, but it's not encrypted, and it can be decoded it's very easily. You can go online and decode this stuff. So, be careful who has the file, right? Yes. All right, now I'm going to resize this really small so I can drag it onto my desktop, or the host desktop, and make this one a little larger. Now suppose you just put it on a USB or send it across a network or whatever. Supposedly the network isn't up. Alright, there we have it there and I'm going to delete it from the host. Now it's on the workstation and remember this is a workstation at the moment. Part of workgroup and workgroup. Okay, so just Dejoin and request ODJ. All right, request an offline domain join and specify the load file, which is the path and it's on the desktop. Users, local admin, desktop, and it is blob.txt. Now that the path is specified, you have to give a Windows path. I'm not going to get into all, like, why you need to give it a Windows path. But basically because it needs to know where the system root directory is, so you can just give it a variable like winder, which points to that, and then specify that it is for the local OS as opposed to um, joining another machine with this. Anyway, local OS and then hit enter and you see the provisioning request completed successfully a reboot is required so I'll do the reboot and pause and restart the video when it's done just want to unpause this really quick and say that you see it says please wait here and this takes a little while when you're using a uh, offline domain join for it to join it to the domain with the blob file the base64 encoded file all right, so it's back up again. Let me log in and show that it is part of the domain now. Again, with just the file. There it is. All right, I can't think of anything else I want to go over in this video, so uh, that's it for this one. Take it easy, and I'll catch you in the next one.